And welcome back to Your Regina 120. I am Jeff Quick, and this is a series of videos of 120 different things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about the false dilemma fallacy. Yet another instance of a logical fallacy. Surprise, surprise. Uh, so how this is going to work is it's going to be similar to the, the previous video where it was a kind of an abuse of the word and, or, or an abuse of having two things that are associated with each other all the time. Uh, in this case, it's an abuse of the word or, or an abuse of uh, things coming together sometimes. So it's going to look in a formal sense like this. Now, as you may note, uh, this is actually going to be something that is valid in some situations. So we're going to kind of hopefully express how and why this is valid and when in what cases. So it, on a formal level, it's going to look like P or Q, not Q, therefore P. Now, if P or Q is uh, an exclusive or, uh, or, or rather if it is, uh, if, if this is true, uh, and always true, uh, then this is actually a valid uh, argument form. Uh, but there's a way in which P or Q can be uh, true that or in, in a, a weaker sense uh, that makes this not valid. And the way is that P or Q must be mutually uh, exclusive. It must be, there, there must be something called the law of excluded middle that holds, which means that uh, for all uh, situations, you can't have, um, or you are either going to have P or you're going to have Q. Uh, so, and there are some things that uh, allow that to happen, but there are many that do not. So, for example, you, you can either be on the left side or the right side of a table. Uh, that, that's kind of a, a definitional, definitional split, uh, but you can be, uh, you know, look red or look green. Or, or, or better yet, uh, look yellow and black, uh, look blue and or look uh, white and yellow versus look blue and black. It, there's certain cases where you could be both, uh, or you could be even neither. Uh, and so, if you're in one of those cases where it can be split up in these kind of in-between uh, cases, uh, then this particular logical uh, form of argument won't apply. So uh, the the, the, the point is, is to, to try to get you to think about what, when you make an argument, to be careful that you're not falling into viewing things only in terms of black and white, uh, in terms of two options when there may be other options available to you. Uh, you would be very lucky to have an inherited a language and a culture uh, that specifies and is capable of naming things and talking about things without any confusion or any shades of gray uh, or any uh, you know fuzzy uh, logic uh, being needed to describe things. Unfortunately, English is not such a language. Uh, English is, and the Western culture in general uh, is is all. There are many many situations that uh, you can get into where you don't have to believe one thing or the other uh, in order to. Uh, to react to a situation. The best example of this uh, is in uh, Matthew 12.30 from, of all places, the Bible, uh, which, quote, uh, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather, gather with me scatters, unquote. This is a, a, a textbook example of uh, kind of creating a, a, a situation where you only have two choices, where you're either with this guy or you're against him. You're either with his group, his, his, his you know, in, in terms of supporting him, or you're against him. Uh, now, of course, there are going to be pe people in, you know, outside of the Middle East at that time who really don't care one way or the other about his particular uh, religious group. There, there's going to be people in Africa, there's going to be people in Eastern Asia uh, that by any argument, uh, aren't really against the, the budding Christian church of the early first century. Um, and yet, he is saying that because they are not with him, they are against him, uh, kind of by definition. Now, sure, there, there's probably some, uh, you know, translation error that we can ascribe to this sort of thing. Uh, so perhaps this is something that 
should should not have been passed down to us. But again, it, the fact that it was it is kind of telling. And so, you know, here we have a, a perfect example of this particular fallacy. Here's another example of this almost exact same thing. Uh, in the past couple of years, the conservative government or conservative government of Canada tried to pass a crime law uh, and justified it to the Canadian public, quote, "If you're not with us, then you're with the child pornographers and the terrorists." Again, this is you know, the, a split between two possible political outcomes. And in the, the case where, um, you know, you're, you're splitting things in that, that sense, it, it's interesting to note that in that case, the person who uh, presented the law and tried to justify it uh, ended up having an affair with his babysitter. And of course, so that, that means that at the very least, the, the, the two classes of people include people who have affairs with their babysitter and, you know, everyone else. So, um, I, again, it's, it, when, when you split things into black and white, you end up with these really unfortunate uh, uh, categories that include a lot of unfortunate outcomes. And it's usually better that if you can get more outcomes or more categories to choose from, you might be able to choose a middle path that's better than the two extremes. Uh, another example is from the uh, Troubles in Ireland. Uh, there's a quote uh, that I remember uh, encountering that went something along the lines of, uh, quote, are you a Catholic or a Protestant? Well, I'm an atheist. Yes, but are you a Catholic atheist or a Protestant atheist? Th this is, again, the sort of thing where you have two options in their world. You can either be a Catholic and be associated with the Catholics, or you can be a Protestant and associated with the Protestants. The idea that people may not actually be either of them is so alien that if you encounter someone, you'll immediately be classified as an ally to one side or the other in, in their particular political struggle. And this is something that comes up when, when you have extreme struggles and when you have people that are uh, kind of dead set on the other side losing, that it becomes very difficult to see other possible ways that this, the, the, the issues and the, the situations that arise could be interpreted other than being for us or against us. Uh, here's another place where this comes up. Uh, if you don't vote against Harper by voting for NDP or Liberals, your choice, then you're voting for Harper. You know, you'll hear this from both the NDP and the Liberals, uh, where if you don't vote for their particular chosen party, then they interpret it as a vote for the Conservatives. And conversely, the Conservatives use a very similar argument uh, against the Liberals. So again, you're the, the idea that there could not possibly be a government in Canada other than, you know, pick your political party, uh, it's obviously not true, because we live in a democracy, uh, depending how the votes are counted at the end of the election, will again determine who is sitting in, in Parliament, and again, it's going to determine who is going to be the si sitting Prime Minister. And it's a little bit more complicated than just voting for one party or against one party. Uh, and in general, th this comes up in politics all the time, because there's something called the Overton window, which is the kind of spectrum of possible uh, ideas. which is bound by the acceptable ideas, and, or w which is split into acceptable ideas that you can use in some context, whether it's discussion, legal um, possibilities, um, the, you know, discussion in and outside of groups. Uh, each group has a, a, a spectrum or a, an array of, of categories or possibilities that you can use and categories and possibilities that you can't. The Overton window is the inside, the, the stuff that you can use. Politicians want to narrow the window. They want to restrict the amount of categories that are available so that you can be corralled into one or the other. Uh, and so this is something that, that does come up in politics as they try to restrict what outcomes can happen. Um, here, here's another example. We can either have deficit spending and big tax breaks for the banks, or we can have even more deficit spending from the other guy and big tax breaks. Or, or yeah, e even more deficit spending from the other guy. So again, the, the idea that we could have something other than deficit spending is not even in that Overton window expressed by that sentence. It is a false dilemma. It is not something that is necessary. Human beings uh, make up a government and they get to decide how much money is being spent. Yes, there are, are commitments that have to be honored, but again, this is something that governments can deal with. Uh, it's not just politics that this is this sort of thing comes up. It's very often in our day-to-day -day lives that we present ourselves with decisions and uh, situations where we have options and where you can kind of count the options. Anytime you sit, you come up to a situation where you have, are, are kind of listing your own options, 
you're almost always restricting those options to some options and not necessarily uh, taking seriously uh, more kind of off the wall suggestions that could be available if you asked others for help and if other people were allowed freely to express uh, what you could be doing in any given situation. Um, and of course, you, you can take this too far. You, you can split the categories very finely, and so it's kind of the opposite of just having two options. You can have so many options that it's almost impossible to choose between the two. Uh, this kind of degrades into more relative, moral relativism, and, and yes, you can make that mistake. But again, there's, there's middle grounds to be sought. Uh, there are valuable mid midpoints in the Overton window uh, that, that can be reached, and so it's worth considering uh, looking for them. In particular, uh, you'll find this uh, any time where there's military conflicts involved, and any time where the possibility of violence starts to increase. Because when you start talking about violence and, and the possibilities for uh, people to actually start fighting each other, uh, you, the people who uh, would be successful in that situation uh, would be the ones who actually res uh, are, are capable of being credible and the ones that are able to respond quick. Uh, so, for example, uh, in uh, for in eastern uh, e eastern Ukraine, uh, you you get a lot of groups that are very radicalized, and a lot of people who will again look at this as a sort of for us or against us. You're either with Euromaidan or you're a terrorist, and they they actually talk about people in terms of being terrorists merely for supporting the other guy uh, in the Euromaidan uh, camp. Uh, whereas on the other side, uh, the 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 Overton window is, is being kind of shrank from the other side as well, where they restrict the amount of media that people are able to access uh, for the sole purpose of making the choices smaller and smaller and closer to a dilemma that can be only solved by picking one side or the other. And so, uh, but this does happen because it's it's easier to, you know, kill the other guy before he kills you if you don't have to sort of think about the consequences and think about the, the nuances of the situation. So, so again, if you can if you can get to the point where you're outside of that, that kind of loop, you're outside of that cycle of violence and uh, restricted thinking, sometimes you can get to outcomes that might seem impossible when viewed in this form, uh, but are nevertheless available and waiting for you to take them. Uh, so there's been a couple of these videos now. We've talked about these logical fallacies. Uh, I just wanted to kind of throw in a point here, which is uh, you, you can you know, look on the internet and find a lot of information about these. In particular, fallacyfiles.org uh, is a good uh, website. Uh, Rational Wiki uh, is part of the less wrong uh, community. Um, that's a good source for information on these topics. And of course, Wikipedia is the kind of general go-to on a lot of it as well. Uh, Wikipedia is not always true, though. Wikipedia is definitely not always true. And in fact, uh, we, we can cause Anybody Wikipedia. Can Anyone can edit it. And it, it is a certainly something that you have to be skepti skeptical of at all times when reading. But nevertheless, when you're looking at something as simple as the false dilemma and other logical fallacies, you can usually get a pretty good idea of how each of them work. And as mentioned in previous uh, videos on these, uh, even if you've taken uh, the logic class where all these have come up, and if you've gotten to the end of this series of 120 videos, come back to it in another couple of years, or, or go back to Wikipedia and review some of this stuff again, because it's so easy to you know, to get lazy and to start looking at things in terms of black and white again, uh, even after you've learned the fact, and even after you've tra trained yourself not to view things in this way, and to look for the middle ground between a very, you know, moral relativist uh, view of many different categories in this, uh, that in the future you'll probably forget. Uh, and it's worth reminding yourself that this is possible. Uh, it's possible to, to get into the either for us or against us uh, mindset, and many people have gotten into it. So be wary of it, and don't let it happen to you. Uh, any questions from the audience today? No. No. Okay. Uh, well, uh, as usual, uh, make sure that you, uh, if you have questions, this uh, there will be uh, places anywhere where this video is posted to, to make comments to that effect, uh, or if you want to frame everything that I'm saying in terms of. Uh, you know, your particular partisan group, feel free to. Oh, and almost forgot, uh, there is one more aspect of this, uh, which is something that I didn't know as a student, uh, which is that when you have, when you're a member of a group uh, that hyper-focuses on a particular topic, uh, and they, a lot of effort is spent reviewing and learning and sharing information about that topic, 
you're training yourself as a member of the group as well as the group itself in terms of organizing information in reference to that topic. And so oftentimes those kinds of groups are primed to understand things in terms of their pr particular focus. And if you get outside of that particular focus, then you're uh, going to be interpreted as being part of that particular worldview. And, and it's, if, if you're providing a choice of understanding the world uh, to that group, they're going to either view it as something that's compatible with the way that they're currently looking at things or some other choice. And it, examples of this are going to be um, the, uh, or the most recent example of this is going to be the various uh, religious and political groups in the Middle East who are so used to viewing their world as a kind of conflict between the, the, the US-backed uh, and Israel-backed uh, Western uh, client states and Muslim-backed uh, client states, or Muslim-backed states as, as kind of their skin group. Uh, and it's, it's blowing their minds that there's this ISIS or Dawa al-Islamia that's coming in here and causing problems for them, even though that both you know, they and ISIS uh, or ISIL are, are both Muslim groups. Uh, and so some of these groups have gone even to the extent of trying to accuse Dawa al-Islamia al as being you know, funded by Israelis or, or led by Jews, even though this is from a ridiculous. Uh, they would be extremely insulted, I think, to, to not even the suggestion that that might be possible. But nevertheless, this is just something that happens in groups automatically if you don't watch for it, if you don't look to see if your the way that you're focused on something is, is presenting the world only in, in two black and white options, uh, then it's very easy to fall into this. So again, uh, keep an eye out, and I will see you next video.